This is going to be a good one today. Hello everybody, welcome to Tech Lore. This is going to be my 8,000 subscriber special video. Woo! And it's a big one. Today I'm going to show you how to go off the grid. Now not literally, I could just tell you to throw your stuff out the window and you're good to go. But the goal today is to be able to still browse the web on all of your devices with the absolute maximum security and privacy in mind to essentially get as far anonymous as we possibly can. My disclaimer for this video is that the more secure you get, the less convenient your life becomes. There are going to be tons of different methods and steps in this video and you might not want to do all of them since some of them are pretty damn drastic. Because of this, I separated the video into different zones. Zone 1 is made up of the easy things to do, which all of you guys should be doing 100% of since it's just basic privacy. Zone 2 is going to be, you know, some more things that you might not want to do. It's going to be a little bit more on the advanced side of things. Zone 3 is going to be almost all pretty extreme. And Zone 4 is going to be for you people out there that are just absolutely crazy and I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'm going to have the steps there for you. Now, some of you may ask why, and that's a very valid question. Well, at a basic level, your privacy is constantly being invaded by the sites you visit, your ISP, your government, and even the services you use like Google or Facebook. As of right now, the biggest consequences have been selling all of your data to third-party marketers, and that's not good. Some people also fear certain things like doxing and other types of leaks of your personal information. That is also a valid concern, and it is something you should watch out for. At the end of this video, I will have a few ways to test how anonymous you are on the web. It's not 100% accurate, but it will give you a general idea of how well you're doing. I'll also leave a PDF file attached, which I created, so please look at it, which you can download and tally up how secure you are on the web. The goal today is to be TechLore secured, so let's get to that point. Let's begin with Zone 1, passwords. I can't tell you how many times I've seen an article talking about the importance of a strong password, yet no one I know uses a strong password. You must have a password manager with all of your passwords created inside of it with a super, super, super strong password protecting your password manager. I'd recommend testing your secure password on howsecureismypassword.net, which will be in the description. Also, never answer security questions online truthfully. You should be creating a password inside of your password manager, which is the solution to your questions. That way, no one's going to be able to guess them and just be able to access your account just because they looked up on Wikipedia you know, where you're born. I actually made a video you can watch giving you guys a 100% free password manager, which also syncs across all of your devices. I'll leave a link in the description for that. Lastly, don't overlook your computer and smartphone passwords. Don't use short pins. Use a full password involving text, numbers, and symbols, and you should be fine. Two-factor authentication. I'm sure you guys know what this is. If you're signing into a site, first it's going to ask for your password, then it's going to ask for additional authentication by sending something to your phone number that you type into the website. Now, phone numbers have proven multiple times to be a great security risk, so luckily many sites are starting to transition to using Google Authenticator, which is a great app. If a site uses Google Authenticator, use Google Authenticator. If it doesn't, having a phone number with two-factor authentication is still more secure than not having any two-factor authentication at all. Your web browser. For Zone 1, you can use whatever web browser your heart desires, go for it. However, make sure you're only using trusted add-ons and extensions. Don't use anything sketchy, and switch your default search engine to DuckDuckGo or Start Page. Either never store cookies, history, cache, or clear them yourself frequently. VPNs. As you guys might have guessed, I was probably going to talk about this at some point, having a VPN is essential to being secure, and they're extremely easy to get. They're really, it's just really easy to set up. You just download one and it works. A VPN is going to hide your identity on the websites you visit, your internet service provider, and any other person trying to track you. A VPN will also encrypt your traffic so nobody can see what you're doing. Stay away from free VPNs and try to avoid proxies. I actually just made a video explaining everything about VPNs you'd ever need to know and why you need to have one right here or I'll leave it in the description. I just can't stress it enough guys, VPNs are so important and you need to have one. I have tons of reviews on my channel, the highest rated so far is NordVPN. I'll leave a review and link for that in the description. Social media. Later on in this video, it's going to be a very simple get rid of it, but as of right now, we're still in zone one. 
First, try not to use any real information of any kind. That includes names, addresses, phone numbers, etc. Second, just like mom used to say, do not talk to strangers. Only talk to family and close personal friends. Third, do not post in public comments. You don't know who you're talking to. Fourth, this is geared towards mobile users. Don't give permissions you don't need to grant. Twitter doesn't need to access your location. Snapchat doesn't need to access your SMS text messages. It's that simple. Don't give them permissions they don't need. The last step for social media, which is pretty extreme, but there's really no other place to put it, is to not post any pictures of yourself. Now, I know for some of you that's just like, what? Why would I even use it? But it is in the video. It is something that does invade your privacy. If you want somewhat of a balance, you can post a picture of your face, but make sure not to have your eyes and your nose inside the same picture, because that's how our brains distinguish people's faces easily. Your phone number. I'm sure you've had to put in your phone number online at least once in your life. Try to avoid this at all costs, but at the very least, create a Google account with completely false information, using a VPN, and then use Google Voice and Google Hangouts as a secondary number, which is unattached to your personal identity. Use this number for your accounts online, as well as if you need to give a phone number to any stranger or anyone else that wants your phone number for whatever reason. A tip, if you're trying to create an anonymous email through Google, they typically ask for a phone number, so you can get something like iNumber, which is gonna give you a new phone number which forwards everything to your main phone. Your smartphone. For Zone 1, make sure you disable any settings that send your usage data inside of apps and the operating system. Make sure to have an active VPN at all times, disable location services and Bluetooth as frequently as possible, and only have the apps you absolutely need to use on your device. Your computers. Similar to phones, exact same thing. Uninstall programs you don't need, disable permissions you don't need, leave location and Bluetooth services disabled as often as possible, and have a VPN on at all times. That's gonna wrap up zone one, but, there's a lot more stuff we can do. Let's start zone two. Communication. First, texting. Texting is completely insecure and normal SMS messages are the absolute worst. Most alternatives out there like Facebook Messenger aren't much better at keeping your data secure and they might actually be worse. So the best thing to do is to either only use iMessage, which only works on Apple devices, or switch over to Signal. Signal is going to be just about the most secure messenger you're going to find out there. It's open sourced, everything on there is fully encrypted, and you can make sure only you and the person you're texting can view your messages. No one else. If you have an Android device, you can also set it as your default SMS app, which is great. Android's awesome. If you have an iPhone, obviously you're not going to be able to do that because Apple doesn't offer that functionality but you can still install the app and run it separate from your messages app. Side note, Signal also protects your phone calls as an added feature. You can call someone else with Signal using end-to-end -end encryption so no one else can see it and you guys have full privacy. Second is email. Most email providers out there completely invade all of your emails sent back and forth. ProtonMail is a completely secure email service which you should all start using today. ProtonMail is open sourced, offers end-to-end -end encryption, the same stuff as Signal completely secure. Now, I understand switching email providers is a very difficult thing to do, especially if you've had the same email for a long time now, but here's how you do it. First, you're going to want to forward all of the emails from your old account to your new ProtonMail account, and you start managing them inside Proton. Second, every single email you get from a service, you're going to open it up and change your email to your new updated email within that service. So every single email you get, you're going to start updating it to be your new email. So now you're slowly starting to move everything over, and after a few months, you'll probably notice that you're not going to get almost anything in your old email. At that point, you can probably shut that one down and just start sticking with Proton. Your smartphone part two. Let's start talking about iPhone versus Android. A lot of what I'm about to say is up for debate, so please keep that in mind, and if you have a different opinion, please leave it in the comments. If you're getting a brand new iPhone out of the box, and you're getting a brand new Android device out of the box, the iPhone's most likely going to be the more secure device. Lots of Android devices don't get continuous security updates, and it's currently much easier to infiltrate a majority of Android devices in comparison to iPhones. The main exception to this is if you have a stock Android device or an Android device close to stock, which frequently gets updates. However, if you're tech savvy and you want to start diving into zone 3 or 4 later on in the video, I'm going to argue Android devices are infinitely more secure than iPhones, and I'll explain why. If you don't want to tinker with the OS of your phone and you hope to use your phone as stock as it possibly gets, 
I'd recommend iPhones for you or a stock Android device for security. Storage. You need to periodically wipe your hard drive's free space using a tool like CCleaner to make sure you can't recover those files you deleted. Another extremely part of storage is encryption. You should be using drive encryption such as BitLocker on Windows or FileLocker for Macs. Never ever remove your encryption on Android devices if you're given the option to do so. Passwords part two. This one's super easy guys. Don't use any form of protection on your computer or mobile devices that isn't a traditional password. Nothing biometric, no pins, nothing voice activated, nothing fingerprint activated. Don't use any of that. Another overlooked device people don't tend to look at is your router. Make sure you're not using a default password on your router and you have a password generated by your password manager. Bonus points if you hide the SSID so you can't visually see the router on your devices. You have to input the name of the router manually. Your web browser part two. For zone two, you should avoid Chrome or any Chromium based browsers since Google is very well known to collect all your data. Try to stick with Firefox or any other privacy based browser. Extension wise, make sure you have uBlock Origin, a privacy oriented ad blocker, Privacy Badger, a tracker blocker, and HTTPS everywhere to keep you using HTTPS rather than HTTP. I will leave all of those in the description. In addition, make sure Flash and JavaScript are completely disabled inside of your browser. And there you guys have zone two. Zone three and four are both gonna be geared towards advanced users, but let's go ahead and move forward and explore some more deep waters. First is gonna be your computer operating system. Here is the order from lowest to highest security operating systems. Number one, Windows as your main operating system. Number two, OS X as your main operating system. Number three, running a Linux virtual machine as a guest on either operating system. Or number four, a fully installed Linux distribution as your main operating system. So that's the goal, to completely switch over to Linux distribution like Lubuntu, Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Fedora, whatever you guys want to use. It's a big transition, so I'd recommend starting with a virtual machine or dual booting with one of your main operating systems right now. So you can try it out before you fully switch over. Linux is much more secure than the other two main operating systems and a majority of distributions are open source, free, and they don't collect much, if any, information about you. Linux is also rarely targeted for attacks or viruses, which is another huge plus. Side note, at this point in the video, location and Bluetooth should be completely off. Passwords part three. This one's pretty straightforward. Make sure to password protect your BIOS as well as your storage drives. This will make sure no one can tamper with your BIOS or even begin the operating system without typing in a password to get past the BIOS and access your disk or disks. You guys are not gonna like the next step. Ditch Google. Google is undeniably one of the largest data collectors in existence. Google is all about conveniency. It's nice to have everything in one location, and this is going to be extremely difficult to do. Go to Google's My Activity Center, which I'll leave a link in the description, where they collect all of your information. You might be scared to find out all the data they collect about you. Delete everything, and then delete your entire Google account. I know it's so sad and hard to do, but if you want the privacy, and security, you're gonna have to do this. It's a total necessity. You guys are gonna hate the next step also. Ditch your addiction. This step, which is probably the only one harder than the Google step, is to get rid of all of your social media. I warned you guys in zone one and the moment has finally arrived. Privacy is supposed to hide who you are and what you're doing. And social media is 100% not doing that. This is probably the toughest one to do and I believe in you guys, I really do. You can break the addiction, you have my support. Your smartphone part three. You're gonna have two options for your phone at this point. The first is to get a basic flip phone that does nothing except phone calls. These phones have so little capability, you're not even gonna be able to encrypt your text messages, so you should avoid texting on these phones if you do get one. This is pretty damn minimal and definitely not the easiest transition to make for a lot of you out there. The second option, which is my preferred option, is to get an Android device. You're gonna wanna install a security and privacy oriented ROM without getting any of the Google services installed. That does include the Google Play Store, so you're gonna have to start getting your apps from the F-Droid Store. I personally use Lineage OS, which is a great ROM and I absolutely love it. Another option out there, which is even more secure than Lineage, is Copperhead OS, but keep in mind it's only geared towards 
pixels, and the Nexus devices, which is all you should be using if you are going to get an Android device. Copperhead's a great project, so definitely check it out. I'll leave both the ROMs I talked about in the description. Location and Bluetooth should also be 100% off. Your web browser part 3. It's time to bring it out, guys. The Tor Browser Bundle. Tor is a browser that will encrypt your traffic and mask your IP address. This makes your traffic unable to be sniffed or searched even by your ISP. The goal here is to completely get rid of any browser outside of Tor. If you're currently using Firefox, it's not going to be that hard to start using Tor since Tor is built off of Firefox, so you're going to notice every setting and the UI is pretty much the same. For your Android devices, get Orbot to connect to the Tor network and Orfox as your browser. If you want a private browser for Android but you don't want to connect to the Tor network, Firefox Focus is built from the ground up to be secure by deleting all of your web traffic once you're done browsing. I'll leave the links to all three of those in the description. iPhones are a little bit trickier but not too much. As of today, Red Onion seems to be the best option for Tor but it will set you back a whopping $1.99. If you don't want a Tor connection, but you want a privacy browser, Firefox was nice enough to make Firefox focus for Android and iOS. So you're set on both devices. Once again, I'll leave the links to the iPhone apps in the description. Spending money anonymously. There are tons of little things to talk about here, so I'm just gonna rip through them. An easy method is to buy prepaid debit cards in cash, activate them with false information, do not enter your social security number, and when you actually spend online with your prepaid debit card, use Tor to anonymize your traffic. Another option out there is to pay with cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. I'd recommend using Coinbase to get started since it is extremely easy to buy Litecoins, Ethereum, Bitcoins, and you can store them all inside of the same account. I'll leave a referral link in the description so that every hundred dollars either of us buys in Bitcoins gives each of us an additional $10. It's free money, so why not? Make sure once again you avoid putting any of your real information inside of websites like Coinbase or anything else that was requesting payment. You should not use your real information. The issue with paying with cryptocurrencies as of today is many websites don't support them yet. Hopefully in the coming years, hopefully tomorrow, but it'll probably take a while, we'll see more mainstream and popular to use cryptocurrency websites. One day Amazon will get it. That's gonna wrap up zone three, everybody. If you've done everything up to this point, you are a stud muffin, but there is still one final zone. Get hyped for zone four. All right, welcome to zone four. As you can see, everything's a lot different. Even my room looks a lot different. This is for you extreme folks out there who really, 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 really wanna protect yourself, either because you're genuinely scared of the world, you're a crazy privacy enthusiast, or you have a lot of your life you need to protect. Your smartphone part four. Back to phones. Now we're absolutely at no phone. Or like I said, a basic flip phone for only phone calls, no text. That's about it. Your MAC address. No, no, not your MAC address. Your MAC address. Spoof your MAC address to make yourself more anonymous on whatever network you're connecting to. A MAC address essentially identifies what type of device you have, such as an iPhone, an OSX laptop, etc. To spoof your Windows computer's MAC address, download the program SMAC and it'll take care of all that for you. I'll leave a link down below. If you're running OSX or Linux, enter this command into your terminal. That's it. I will leave that in the description if you didn't catch that. Social engineering. This is kind of a tricky one to talk about because it's not really a strict yes and no, you done it step. At some point, Someone may want to find out more information about you, and social engineering is a great way to get that information. A person may contact you directly, or they might go through some of your friends and social engineer them to get more information about you. There are a few rules to follow to avoid this happening. One, don't talk to strangers on the internet. Simple as that. Two, never give any personal information anywhere on the internet, or even if you can, in real life, because some of that does get uploaded to the internet. You should create a whole new name, date of birth, life, everything. Separate your online identity from your personal identity. Number three, this one's actually kind of tricky. Change your speech patterns. Using similar speech patterns and phrases can actually be tracked by social engineers using deductive reasoning skills. Fancy stuff. So always switch up the way you talk and communicate on the internet and it's going to be much harder to find out who is actually speaking. Erasing your identity. This is actually kind of a first step for the video if you really want to go extreme about it because you want to start anonymous 
not do everything and then erase your identity. If you really want to go all the way through this video, we want to completely erase as much of your internet identity as we possibly can, or at least spoof it to make it seem like it's someone else, not you. First. Fill your emails with mail bombers, which is going to flood your emails with tons of random crap, and it's going to flood the cache and make sure sensitive information is all overwritten. There are tons of email bombers on the internet, which all work very easily, and they're really easy to find, but I'm not going to link them here because I don't want that on my channel. Next, upload random pictures of other people to make it hard to determine who an account belongs to. Then change your information for accounts with inaccurate nonsense. You know, random names, random date of births, every account you have should be completely different. It's going to be really hard to trace them back to each other. The goal here is not only to remove the links between your accounts on the internet, but also the links to you. You want your whole online identity to be completely separate from you in real life. And a good way to do that is to completely mix up all of your accounts so it's hard to find out which one is even close to you. Another step to take is to delete as many accounts as possible. Go through all your emails, search for every service and website you signed up for, go there and get it deleted. If you can't get the sites deleted, email them and most sites are required to delete your account. There's also a great site called Delete Your Account which I'll leave in the description. It's going to let you alphabetically sort through a ton of websites online and it will maybe spark your memory for having an account with that specific service. If deleting like a certain account that you have is too much because you have to have that account for some reason, you can delete pictures, videos, comments, and as much personal information about yourself for that account as possible. <coughs> That's it for zone four, guys. Man, that's a lot of recording. My throat is done. If you've done everything in this video, I would tell you to comment below, but I'm not sure you should be doing that. The last little section for this video is going to be testing how anonymous you are on the internet. To start with the basics, download the PDF I created just for you guys in the description and make sure you score at the very least Techlore secured. Obviously shoot as high as possible. The max score is 200, but the very minimum you should be Techlore secured. Next. Right now, go on DuckDuckGo, type what is my IP address. It should not be your actual IP address. If it is, you're interneting wrong. To get more complex, here are some services you can use to help you out. Pipple? Pipple? People? I don't know. It's a search engine that searches web pages for common usernames, email addresses, phone numbers, even names and locations. You can look up yourself via email, name, number, any other information you want to give and see what comes up on you. TinyEye is the next tool. It's an advanced reverse image lookup tool. If the person uses different usernames, has a fake name on all their stuff, you're not going to be able to link anything up, which is the goal. If you look up yourself and you realize you start seeing lots of your accounts up there, you didn't do something right in this video, you didn't pass that test. The last website is Archives. They have real records of people's employers, phone numbers, previous residences, family trees, arrest records, newspaper articles, and anything they have on that person. It's a pretty wide database. It's crazy. It's paid, so keep that in mind, but you can use this tool to look yourself up and see what there is about you on the web. Hopefully nothing came up on you on any of those things, and if nothing did, you passed all the tests, you are successfully TechLore secured. Congratulations! Great job, guys! That's going to wrap up the video. Holy shit, that was a lot of information. I hope you guys found this useful and you at least attempted some of it. Hopefully all of it. We need to stand up for our privacy and security. Let's take the initiative and get the ball rolling. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a freaking lemuricious day. Hey everybody, I put this video together myself and it took over 50 hours to complete. Please leave feedback in the comments so I know if I'm doing things right, wrong, so-so. I want to make sure you guys are getting the absolute best quality videos. Please give the video a like and definitely follow me on social media and don't forget to smack that sub button for more videos in the future.